Um, my name is David Green, and today I'm a Senior Pharmaceutical Quality Assessor in the Division of Product Quality Assessment 17 in the Office of Product Quality Assessment 3. Uh, we're the Actives Group um, in the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about common deficiencies in the drug master, in drug master files. This is uh, the standard disclaimer that you've seen many times. And here are the uh, mission and vision statements of OPQ and uh, our slogan, uh, One Quality Voice. Thought I'd present that since you haven't seen that. <laughs> so objectives of today's uh, presentation are first to discuss general considera considerations regarding type 2 DMFs, uh, the format of the type 2 DMF uh, in the CTD format, and briefly touch on the contents and common deficiencies in each section of the drug substance uh, module. And finally, a brief sum summary. And I did have challenge questions, but I thought it'd be nice to you and I took them out. So general considerations. Um, first, th the type two uh, drug master file, a DMF, it deals with the chemistry manufacturing controls of the active ingredient of a drug product. Uh, reasons for in the inadequate of your DMF being inadequate were the absence of adequate information, which will cause, a, which usually causes a failure of, of the completeness assessment, assessment, a delay in the DMF becoming adequate, and a delay of eventually in the trickle down thing of the end of its referencing to be approved. It's very important that you understand the critical chemistry manufacturing parameters needed to ensure consistent production of a high quality API. This goes without saying provide high quality submissions. This will ease the review process and get to that first cycle adequacy quicker. And finally, I have a request in general. This is not a uh, deficiency or anything. It's extremely helpful if applicants submit the 3938 form with their DMS submission. This makes a lot of critical information easily obtained uh, up front uh, for our staff. The DMF is follows the, the CTT format for the the drug substance module. And so there's really seven sections, the S1, the general properties, S2, the manufacturer section, S3, the characterization, four, specification, five, reference standard, six, the container closure system, and finally, seven, the stability. And I'm gonna, that's kind of the format of the talk. I will go through a section and deficiencies, so forth. So the S1 section comprises of three Submodules, the first being the nomenclature module, and this is basically every a name you can for your substance, the, the international non-proprietary name, the INN, or the compendial name if applicable, chemical names, other generic names you give it, proprietary names, the CA chemical abstract service registry number, just how you identify. Second subsection is the structure, and again, it's the st structure of your uh, API, including the chemi uh, stereochemistry if applicable, the molecular formula and the molecular weight. And finally, the general properties section. And this is your physiochemical properties and other rev relevant properties of your uh, substance. And that can, can include and not limited to physical description, PKA, polymorphism, solubility, characteristics, hygroscopicity, melting point, chirality, isomerism, et cetera. Common deficiencies we see in this section uh, are missing polymorphic characterization, missing hydroscopicity studies, um, in, uh, incomplete solubility data, especially for solvents that are used in the manufacturing process, uh, stereochemical and chiral information about your API, a failure to explain why a certain property is not there. Again, also very common is inconsistent information uh, with known scientific literature. So please make full use of the literature. A lot of this information is out there. The second uh, section of the um, 
is the manufacturing section, and it comprises of six subsections, the manufacturer information, description of the manufacturing process, control of the materials, control of the critical steps and intermediates, process validation or, and or evaluation, and the manufacturing process development section. Common deficiencies in this section are failure to provide uh, all the information on any or additional contractors involved in your manufacturing process, uh, release testing or release testing of the drug substance, and that includes the name, the address of the facility, and if there's FEI, DUNS numbers, and so forth, and the responsible person of the facility. It's very critical information that we need. Uh, failure to provide the description of the pro any post-processing procedures, such as micronization, uh, how it's performed, equipment use, and so forth. Uh, this is a big one too, incomplete synthetic schemes. You know, often we're missing the reagents, catalysts, solvents used, reaction conditions, if intermediates, if they're non-isolated, bracketing, uh, it's very uh, difficult to review without that. Uh, and vice versa, incomplete description of the manufacturing process. You know, uh, you have the opportunity to give a description in paragraph form. Oftentimes we miss, we're seeing uh, missing batch size, input sizes, theoretical or expected yield counts from each step. Additional deficiencies in this section are lack of adequate justification for starting materials, uh, the designation, um, uh, missing information on intermediates. And this is intermediates that are, you know, that you purchase from a third party vendor. And so the full name and address of the manufacturing site and contact information of that vendor, uh, their complete manufacturing information for how they make that intermediate, uh, statements on class one solvents for their process, control of impurities and residual, residual solvents in their specifications, uh, the vendor and in-house COA for that intermediate. Uh, finally, a commitment that if the, from the DMF holder that if the vendor of the intermediate is changed added or the process of the manufacturing of the intermediate is modified in any way that they inform the agency as well as the ANDA holder. And finally, uh, for this section, frequently missed information, uh, missing information errors are reprocessing procedures, solvent recovery processes, critical process parameters and material attributes, complete COAs for the all intermediates if they're isolated, and an absence of the process validation or evaluation summary. And again, batch sizes, yield data, and any analytical results uh, is critical. The next section of the application we, uh, is the characterization section, and that comprises of really two subsections, and that's the elucidation of the structure and the impurity section. Common deficiencies in these sections are incomplete characterization of data, including interpretation of the spectral data of the API, failure to address stereochemical features of your API, and with and these are potential tests you can use, chiral APLs, HPLC, specific optical rotations, single crystal X-ray diffractometry, et cetera. I mean, and missing information on the polymorphic characterization of your uh, API. And, and these are common tests for that. That's PXRD, DCS, FTIR, et cetera. And finally, and this is very common, unfortunately, poor presentation of the data it very, it's very hard to assess something if you can't read the copies of your spectra. So it's uh, illegible copies of spectra are missing comparison Expar com I'm sorry, missing comparison or expansion information of your data. It, it's very difficult to, if you can't read it, to know if it's correct. Finally, for this section, uh, missing impurity information. Uh, failure, this is new from the last time this is presented many years ago, I, but uh, M7, uh, failure to produce uh, to provide a complete hazard assessment summary of all potential and actual impurities in this uh, section. Um, we often see missing residual solvents and inorganic impurity um, assessments uh, and identification of impurities in a way that we can uh, understand them or in the sense to provide the IUPAC name and the chemical structure. You know, sometimes they give uh, 
company name and no real information other than we can't really interpret what that infrastructure is. So please, it's a very important. Um, classification of process related, uh, classifying that impurity, whether it's a process or related or degradant product, and uh, any safety related data that would use in as part of your justification, if you're justifying um, the impurity classification. I do wanna give a shout out here, it's not on the slide, but uh, a lot, this relates to the identification of impurities. If you have the opportunity, please submit the S structure data file of your, your, for your application of all your impurities. It cuts down on a lot of errors that can occur when transferring structures in applications. And, and a lot of our processes are geared now to really absorb the information out of that file. So I, please uh, consider submitting that information. And um, finally, uh, on w there is, uh, because we've heard a lot about the nitrosamine, but often we don't see the nitrosamine risk assessment that, that needs to be in this also. And, and here's the um, important references in terms of the guidance is involved, uh, identifying and controlling all potential nitrosamine, small molecules in this case, and nitrosamine drug substance related impurities and refer to those two particular documents. The next section is the controlling of the drug substance and that's consistent with five subsections, the specification, the analytical methods, the validation of analytical methods, batch analysis, and of course the justification of your specification. And a deficiency we common see, commonly see in this section are incomplete specifications, specifically agreement of the your specs with the USB monographs available and ICHQ 3A R2. Uh, and if you, there are other impurities that have been um, uh, listed in other compendial monographs that uh, might not be in the USP, it's good to address them. Uh, and whether your unidentified or unspecified impurities uh, meet the ICHQ3 A R2 levels. Um, residual solvents levels, again, um, limits based on the ICHQ3 C, the USP467, et cetera. Um, residual metals, if you have a catalyst you use that in, and so forth. And I'm missing a reference here, you should also consider ICHQ3 D in that. And finally, quantitative and qualitative counter ion tests. If you have a particular counter ion, uh, we often see sometimes that's missing. Um, also uh, seen in this section, a lack of identification tests for counter ion in terms of uh, the quantitative. Uh, this may be, may be requested if the counter ion is changed here during your synthetic process. So uh, keep that in mind and also missing stereospecific identification tests for chiral drug substances, um, and there's a reference. Finally, failure to include USP identification tests as part of the drug substance specification. One last slide uh, on these S4 divisions. Quanti quantitative results are not reported in actual numerical values. This can be troubling, <laughs> failure to control potential mutagenic, mutagenic impurities, and we saw that in, it, this goes in hand with the uh, impurity section, and, and for, in terms of identification with documentation uh, of the impurity, and again, controlling it per the ICHM7, and M7 has many options to control these impurities, it's not just a limit. And if you do choose to control certain impurities, that they uh, higher limits are justified with the pharmacological or toxicology studies. Um, failure to provide equivalent studies between the in-house and USP method. We often see failure to determine, demonstrate stability indicating criteria of your assay or related substance method. And that it could include no, uh, no or inappropriate stress conditions, missing peak purity data, missing mass balance between assay and related substance results, representative chromatographs of your method. It's important to provide that as well. Um, finally, incomplete batch data, uh, and that includes the, whether the batch data, the batch size, manufacturing date, manufacturing site, et cetera, 
the purpose of the batch, which is validation or stability. And failure to, and also failure to provide justification for a specification, maybe based on, but not, fall, but not limited to your development data, ICH guidelines, batch analysis data, tux data, stability data, USP or other compendial monographs. So the next section of your DMF, it is your reference standard section. There really isn't any subsections to this, so let's go straight into the, the common deficiencies. First, uh, missing lot numbers of any USP reference standard you might be referencing. Failure to qualify an in-house standard against the USP reference standard. Uh, missing characterization data for primary standards when there is no USP reference standard available. Uh, missing qualification of data for impurity standards. Uh, that includes missing spectra, COA, purity, et cetera. And finally, missing identification information for in-house impurity standards yeah, that you might need like a working standard and so forth, lot number, source, et cetera. Uh, container closure section is also uh, another section that doesn't really have any subsections. So common deficiencies we see here is failure to provide a certificate for the bag that is in contact with the drug substance. And this is, uh, in uh, the reference here is the 21 CFR 177, 186 requirements for the indirect food additive regulations and the 21 CFR 177, 1520 for uh, LDPE bags. So it's important that that certification is provided. Uh, and also your insufficient label information. You know, uh, the label should have and not be limited to the, the name of the API, batch number, storage conditions, retest date, manufacturer's name and address, data manufacturer, net weight, gross weight, and a caution statement, et cetera. You know, provide a proper label. label. The last section of your DMF is the stability section, and that consists of three subsections, your stability summary and conclusion section, your post-approval stability protocol and stability commitment section, and your stability data section. Common deficiencies seen in the S7 is failure to provide justification for your stability specifications. Uh, some tests can be excluded, but if they're justified, Failure to support a retest date or expiration date by your stability data. Missing explanation of the out of specification role results, in particular, no summary of the investigation, no supporting analytical report for that investigation. And finally, what measures were, you, were taken to address the issue to cause the out of spec? Um, very important information for us. And in summary, as you can see from my slides, some sections generate more deficiencies than others. And, and that's specifically common for like impurity controls and manufacture and so forth. Um, it's very important to understand the critical chemistry and manufacturing parameters of your, your API. Uh, and I can't emphasize this enough, use regulations, the developmental data and good science to justify your choices. Make good use of the literature. It's there, use it. Finally, I wanna acknowledge my colleagues who helped me with this presentation. And uh, there is no challenge questions, so you know I let you off the hook. I am gonna go ahead now and pass it on to uh, Dr. Fung in OPQA1. So thank you all for your time and I appreciate you listening.